We are here to talk about hybrid cookers and uh, starting to gain some traction out there in the manufactured solar cooking world. And uh, Dave Chalker gave me uh, an incredible discussion of that three years ago in June when I was here on his uh, farm. And, and uh, for the class, we'd like to talk about the advantages of hybrid solar cookers and maybe a little bit of the story of how you came about uh, acquiring them and, and uh, redesigning them for the ugly model. So uh, take it away. Let's, let's start with the advantages as you see it, because that's going to be the heart of the matter for the class. Yeah, the advantages are reliability, convenience. Um, they function just like any solar cooker. The sun's shining, they're a solar oven, but when it gets cloudy, overcast, partly sunny, um, which would cause a typical solar oven to um, have fluctuations in temperature because when the clouds come over, the oven will cool. The hybrid oven solves that problem. And um, how it solves that problem, it gives you a secondary heat source, which is electric, and it works just like your house oven. Yes. So in my case, we designed it to be low wattage, so it can be off-grid, uh, people that, that have uh, their own systems. Uh, these uh, uh, need at least 500 watts, and over time, it'll cycle on and off, and um, I've done shows where um, at the end of the day, I will have averaged 100 watts. Um, uh, some hours I don't use any electric at all, and then there'll be times where it'll kick in, but on average, it just works out to about 100 watts, which is really, really minimal. During that whole time, it's cooking. The whole time it's cooking, yes. yeah. 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 Um, uh, I mean, the food tastes the same as if it was done in a solar oven, whether it's used as an electric oven. The hybrid actually just kind of puts it in a new category, which is makes it a modern appliance. Um, you know, it kind of, solar cooking has always been kind of put into that category of, of a novelty. Um, I always took it a little more serious than novelty, mm -hmm. but a lot of folks kind of think of it that. Um, and, but when, once you add an electric element, it, it's a little more serious. Uh, and like I said, it puts it into an appliance category. Sure, if you're 24 seven cooking, yeah. I know I can say how many people have said the big objection is, well, what do you do at night? What do you do when it's raining? Exactly. What do you do? Well, you don't have to worry with yeah. this at and, any time. You gotta... And that, that is solved by the, the backup. Yes. Um, so I've always promoted the, the hybrid oven. I, I mean, when I manufactured, if somebody requested a solar only, uh, they must have had a specific reason why I, I would make them. I never refused anybody. Sure. But for all these years, I've been promoting the, the benefits of the hybrid oven. Um, I think it just moves, like I said, it moves it into a new category, pushes the technology forward. And there's no reason why you can't blend two technologies together. Mm -hmm. I mean. The reason you cook in the first place is to have your food done, yeah. and um, and it just takes one failure sometimes. Mm -hmm. Somebody trying solar cooking for the first time, it's not what they, not what the end result was not what they expected, and so they give it up or they they they, they don't. Um, uh, anybody mention solar cooking in the future? They're they're, they're you know quick to talk about their failure and not their successes. So the hybrid oven uh, tries to always talk about success, always talk about got the food on the table, fed the family, everybody's happy. Sure. And uh, I always got to repeat the Faro story, where this Faro, which is known for sunny, sunny, sunny climate and days, and, and the solar cooking conference there, Console Foods, and there must have been two hours of pure sunlight and then spotty clouds, cloud sun, but mostly actually half the time it seemed like it was raining yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, so the only cooking that was being done was being done with the with the ugly right you had the, the ugly, ugly hybrid um, yeah we cooked a cake a birthday cake for yes. one of the people yeah um, but yeah so Faro had 300 and, you know 40 days of sun and the three days of the conference Happened I was be... the only one <laughs> yep. and which was good because it's hard to talk to somebody about electric when the sun's shining yes because the oven's working like a solar oven yep. like all the devices that were there and there were 
easily a hundred yeah. from all over the oh, world. Yeah. Um, but they just sat in the yard and they were they weren't doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. And I was able to do a birthday cake and 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 it I think it enlightened the people at the conference what this product really is. Um, I encouraged the group to go out and, and to think about hybrids and try to um, incorporate it into their products. And uh, I did have some good responses. Uh, a gentleman in South Africa um, produces a hybrid. Yes. Um, and um, uh, Gosun has a, a fusion that's a hybrid. Mm -hmm. So it's slowly uh, gaining acceptance. There's been some very uh, uh, serious academic papers that have been written about the hybrid oven, which is good. Uh, spreads the knowledge, spreads, spreads the, the information about the technology worldwide. So, and that's really, uh, uh, to me, that's a, a huge success. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, so we'll get the story going back to the Tulsi. And how did you uh, run into that and take it from there, evolving all the way up to the ugly? Oh, OK. <laughs> well, the quick story is, <clears throat> I, I, I solar cooked for many years, uh, and we just got a home computer. And so one night I was typing in solar uh, ovens, solar devices. And um, at the time, um, the cook it showed up. Sure. Um, the hot pot showed up. And uh, uh, sun oven sure. showed up. They all had websites. Okay. And that was pretty much repeat, repeat, repeat. And then there was a lot of um, do-it-yourself uh, websites. Sure. But I kept going back, kept going back, kept going back. And I must have went back, I don't know how many pages. Uh, uh, and I came across one that said hybrid oven. And I go, oh, that's different. And for whatever reason, you know, I think it... Um, uh, I opened the website, I looked at it, and it was a company in India. And um, there were 12 hours difference. It was about 11 o'clock, so 11 in the morning there. And I called him up, and I talked to the owner's daughter who was th there uh, uh, at the plant helping out. And she was a, 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 a went to the University of New Delhi, and uh, her English was, you know, excellent. So I talked to her, and I ordered two ovens, and uh, they shipped them over. Uh, Homeland Security, or Customs <laughs> at the time, it wasn't Homeland Security because it was uh, ripped one apart uh, with a knife. Oh man! Uh, ruined it. Uh, put a sticker on it. Um, and let the other one go untouched. And so, from the one that was untouched, um, I used and uh, got excited about it. Saw the benefits of it because in New York State in the summertime. Um, you know, from from the um, start of summer to the end of summer, you're talking 16 weeks, and a really good summer is 13 weekends, and uh, three weekends will be rain out or too cloudy to solar cook, and so the hybrid oven allowed me to yeah. start earlier in April and cook all the way up, and it gave me many more weekends uh, that I could get it out in the yard and cook food with it. So it really was, um, uh, uh, to me, an eye-opener. And um, uh, I did some marketing and so forth, and then uh, eventually I called back to the factory and, and, and asked if I could come visit them in India. And they said, yeah. And I told them why I wanted to be their distributor in the United States, and would they be interested in that? So I went to India, met the owner, met uh, uh, Nayarka, the daughter that I'd spoke to, and um, at the end of the meeting, I came back with exclusive rights nice. to the United States to sell the Tulsi. Um, the the initial ones were made with glass in the back. Um, I did some early uh, survey work, and I interviewed some people. Would you want a cooker with glass or a reflector? And almost everybody said glass. But once they saw the glass, uh, and they, then they started thinking about, oh, glass breaks. You mean the, the, the glass the, on the lid? The glass on the lid. Okay, and that's, a, uh, that's, that's actually a mirrored glass as a reflector? A mirrored glass, yeah, right. originally. Right, right. And so, we, so I wrote back to the factory and I said, no, 
you know, people say what they want, and then when they see it, it's not what they want. So the next shipment, the factory changed to reflectors, sure. and we eliminated the glass. So eliminated weight, the reflectivity was oh, the yeah. same, and it ended up being more consumer. But originally, mm -hmm. it was glass. Yeah. So the factory is excellent. Um, I could do that. I could get feedback from the United States, feed it back to the factory, and they would make design changes. Sure. Uh, we had some issues with the lid, and then they figured a, a, a lid clo a lid um, de a device on the side that when you opened up the lid, it would catch and stay. And that was that, uh, versus holding it up and right. and because the glass is pretty heavy. Oh yeah. So they, we did that for quite a number of years, and it was, it was a good partnership. But all the time, I was getting feedback from folks in the United States that the cooking area was too shallow. And um, they weren't really willing to make a deeper product. At that time, it got me thinking. Um, I never really put anything on paper, but I started thinking about, boy, I maybe you could design something here. And then I got a phone call after the earthquake in Haiti from a businessman mm -hmm. in Florida, wanting umpteen thousands, of course. And, and I presented my idea to him. He said, fine, start. You know, try to move that forward if you can. And from that, I designed the Sun Focus, told him I had it all ready, and he, uh, he, he kind of said, well, I don't have any orders. So it was like, can you do this? And I said, yes. And then when I went back, he said, sorry. You were ahead of the curve. Yeah. <laughs> but I had it designed. I had it ready to go to the market. I had it tested. I mean, I'd done all the work. And so... From that gentleman's phone call and my zeal, so to speak, moving forward, I developed the Sun Focus. And uh, the Sun Focus um, is very rugged, uh, it's made of uh, a heavy duty plastic. Uh, it is a hybrid, uh, it's twice as deep as the Tulsi. Um, the wattage is the same, less than 500 watts. So the engineering of the Tulsi was excellent. Sometimes there was, there was a, you know, value issues with it um, when it came over the, the, the manufacturing. Um, there was some, some issues, you know, and, but with the Sun Focus, that all went away. I, I designed all those uh, other issues away. And um, that was 2011, 2010. And up until 2023, I sold them all over the United States. Sure. Yeah. When looking at this and thinking of the Tulsi, you could practically stand on this. The Tulsi, you don't want to stand on it. No, no. <laughs> you no. would cave it in. Um, yeah. This is very rugged. I've never had any glass break or anything. Um, but um, somewhere around 2017, uh, I read an article that California might be... Is, thinking about maybe possibly outlawing plastic uh, in the, uh, uh, so I started thinking about, okay, could I make um, a less expensive hybrid um, in a product that wasn't plastic? Right. And I um, started doing some thinking, and, and I don't know why, I, I mean, this is rugged and so forth, but the ugly hybrid came about, um, and it's made of cardboard, uh, very hard. It's like a mover's cardboard, oh, yeah. uh, about an inch thick, and um, has all the same components. All I do is put it in a different case, mm -hmm. and then we, we we treat it with a with a water repellent uh, uh, product. Um, if it was untreated, it would be subject to moisture and so forth. And a lot of do-it-yourselfers will make cardboard boxes. Uh, box cookers, uh, they last about a year, uh, and then they're and making another one. And that's if they're bringing into their porch every time. Yeah, they don't it doesn't get rained on. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. yeah. they don't typically weather treat them. Yeah, they just insulate them and so forth. So the ugly hybrid came about. Um, it's easy to to put it in three colors. I think there's blue and there's red also. It's a little more difficult to change the color with the Sun Focus because you have to buy quantity um, uh, pallet loads of, uh, and of plastic. And it's already mixed, the color's already mixed yeah. up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
But um, so that kind of what I what I did. I set up a business. I imported for a while. Then I designed and started manufacturing my own ovens, and I did that for many years um, uh, uh, here in, uh, in the shop. Um, when um, and the hybrid oven, like I said, isn't really any different than a, a regular oven. And uh, for the folks out there, if you if you think about solar cooking in all categories, a panel cooker, um, uh, what I call a panel bollock, which is a, the, the new products that are out that are kind of a lightweight panel cooker with a parabolic shape. Um, then you have your box oven, you have your parabolic uh, dishes, uh, and then you have your, your vacuum tube cookers. And then you have, from the box cooking category, you have this hybrid. So that's kind of much the whole the whole spiel, but no matter what cat, what type it is, it uses the three what I call the three C's. And with the hybrid, it's four C's, but the three C's are collect, capture, convert. So what you want to do is, with the use of a reflector, you want to collect as much sun as you can by shining it down into the box. So you collect. The capture is it goes through the glass down into the cooking chamber. The last C is to convert, and it's the color black. So if you have collect, capture, convert, you have the essence of uh, solar cooking. More energy goes in, then comes out, temperature rises, and you're able to cook food. It's just that simple. Okay. I say the fourth C for a hybrid because we add current. So, and that's what makes it the hybrid. Sure. Yeah. Well, no, and I, I, I've got to call attention. I had uh, because I don't have one yet. <laughs> Any minute now. <Yeah. laughs> the reflector uh, being slightly curved like that. Yes, it, that was something that I designed. Yeah. Because on the on the Tulsi and most most do-it-yourself cookers, it's it's a flat yeah. um, surface. Sure. But because the earth moves, darn darn earth. <laughs> Uh, it goes, the, the edges go out of focus. Sure. So instead of having 100%, yeah. this moves over and you end up with 80 or 75 yeah. until you move the whole box. Yeah, and you'll so, see that on the, on the glass, you'll see where right. it's still reflecting. So what time. I did was when I designed this, is I made it curved so that it focuses in, in three inches from each side sure. so it can stay focused longer uh, stay in focus longer, and somewhere in the center, you'll see a you'll see a heavy white line, where kind of a, the focus oh, accumulates. Yeah. But it will stay in focus longer because of the curve. Um, and then down below, um, with the hi the hybrid we have to use um, uh, uh, it's a 900 degree heat blanket. Mm -hmm. um, and then down below. You have to insulate, and you can use, uh, this is brown and thermal acoustic, this is thermal acoustic, or you can use, um, uh, this is R24, I think these are R19, um, you can use um, standard. My preference is to use the thermal acoustic, but you can do this. And there are do-it-yourselfers that will use newspapers. Yeah. Also, stuff around in lieu of in lieu of insulation, uh, and that's certainly acceptable too. Um, typically, a do-it-yourself uh, box oven, because um, they the, the, they don't worry about heat losses as much, um, and there will be heat losses through the glass or you have an insulated well um, it, that'll limit your ultimate temperature. So you might be less than 300 degrees, but a good commercial uh, box oven, a sun oven, for example, you know, 375 easily. These will do 350 very easily. Um, but you can a do it yourself or can make a an acceptable uh, sure. solar cooker that'll be uh, in the moderate temperature range versus a high oven temperature range. Yeah. So. That's pretty much the essence of, um, of what you need. Um, you need a case, you need insulation, you need a containment, 
you need glass, something to cover it. Even with the, the panel cookers and the panel ballot cookers, they use a, a, a turkey bag yes. or they'll invert two Pyrex bowls. You have to have some kind of containment shell because it's collect, captured yeah. in And so if you have those three elements, you're, you're, you're rocking and rolling. And then of course here we have, this just plugs into 110, standard 110 uh, current, has a resettable fuse if something should happen. Um, uh, as a safety precaution and has a high and low switch so the low switch is anywhere from um, temperature of 210 which is uh, just below boiling to 250 and then the high temperature is 250 to 300 um, I could put in higher thermostat higher thermostats but the idea is solar cooker first with backup so as long as the Sun stays above 300 the electric doesn't come on it's cloudy and overcast and it comes down and you need 300 degrees because you're cooking a roast or you're cooking a turkey or, or, or something else, the electric will kick on. If you want to slow cook because you're doing a, um, uh, a stew, uh, or something that you want to cook slow and long duration, then you put it on a low setting and, and it'll fluctuate between 250 and, and 210. Um, uh, works, you know, it's, it's uh, reliable and convenient, like I said. One of the disadvantages of, of the hybrid oven uh, is the cost, because you do have the cost of the electrical system that you have to uh, um, put into the oven. Um, but as I mentioned before, I developed the, the ugly hybrid uh, uh, as a lower cost alternative to the premium sun focus that we were producing. And when you're in the divines phase and you're, you're kind of in the unknown regions and you, and you have the product, you have to decide what you're gonna call it. So I have to give my brother credit. He said, because it's only a box, he said, and you compare it next to the sun focus. He said, Dave, he says, that looks pretty ugly. And I said, well, that's going to be the name of it. It's going to be the Ugly Hybrid. And at first, um, uh, I, I think the consumers didn't, didn't like it. But now I go online and I type in the hybrid oven, and I find more searches for the Ugly Hybrid than I do the Sun Focus. And the Sun Focus has been around almost okay. twice as long. Yes. So I guess having a catchy name, uh, does have its have have its advantages. Um, so, like I said, it's an economy version um, versus a, a molded plastic version. Both work the same, and um, um, I, as of the end of the year, Luther, as you know, I no longer am producing them, and I, I, I do want to tell the people that are might be looking at this. This uh, adventure has been uh, um, uh, rewarding to me. Uh, the places that it's taken me, the, the, the people that I've talked to. Um, um, I never knew when I got an order where the next oven is gonna ship. And I'd open up an email and I'd see it's going to a university or it's going to a college or it's going to a elementary school or, or you know, anybody across the United States. And it was always rewarding to make them, uh, get feedback once in a while that uh, the people enjoy them. Um, and I wouldn't change, and I had no, no second doubts that I made the decision to go into the solar cooking industry. Yeah. Um, it's just been that rewarding to me. Um, and I encourage anybody that wants to follow in my steps, think about hybrid ovens. Um, I know it's a little more challenging when you think about putting in an electric element and how you're going to uh, configure it and so forth. But if you have those skills, if you're an engineer at home and you're a do-it-yourselfer, go a little beyond just making a solar oven and try to make it a hybrid. And I think you'll find that that 24-7 capability of cooking food will, will more than enough reward the time and effort that it takes to do it. Well, and I, I see it as uh, the direction any new cooker maker should take, try, try from the get-go, 
uh, for several reasons. The first is that most common objection. What do you do when the clouds are rolling? What do you do at night? Right. Can you cook with it at night? And of course the answer is not with pure solar energy, no. And so this, and you could call it a backup or the auxiliary feature, but it makes it a 24 seven appliance. Yeah. And that's, you've expressed that already. Uh, the other one is in uh, countries where we consider them really poor, but they are starting to electrify uh, with microgrids and their own their own household right. just grids with solar panels, uh, with a, and a battery could probably take care of a, a very minimal solar cooker uh, for those features. Yeah, because it's low so low wattage. Yeah, and um, you just need um, uh, an inverter to change it from DC to AC. Yeah, um, and if you are in a two twenty country or two yeah two twenty country. You just need a converter, right. and I have shipped these overseas, and that's what the people use, and it changes it from 220 to 120, and it works, and it's fine. Do you include a converter with the shipment? I, I do or? send over uh, a travel converter. Sure. Yeah. Um, there are better ones, I right. guess, but it, it does work off a travel converter. And when I did the birthday cake in Faro, that's that's what I use. And it didn't seem to affect the, the, the system at all. Sure. So I'll open this up. This is the one um, I'm very proud. I have to say I'm very proud to donate this one to Luther and the Thank Solar you. Cooking Museum. But this is um, the one that I did up. Um, this is how it goes to a customer. Um, and you just want to keep these arms straight. And you don't want to do this. Sure. And just little, keep them straight. That little knob you can tighten a little bit yep, to make yep, it. Uh, and this yep. just slides up. Yep. And you can adjust, and then, and then if you can, just push this up to the top, and then just tighten it up, and yep. it'll stay. And as the sun goes down, drop it down an inch or two. Watch the sun hit the yep. the glass. You just want to put the reflector on the on the uh, two thirds of the front wall. Right. So you don't want it shining outside the box. Just keep it on the front wall, two thirds to the center, and uh, you're off and good. Yep. It does come with. It does come with side panels that go on. And the side panels were developed um, early on, maybe 2005 or so. We had a customer that, that uh, was looking for a little higher temperature than just a single panel. And um, so we developed the tri-panel. And the, and the tri-panels, or the two extra two sets of panels, add about 25 degrees to the cooking temperature. So it was well worthwhile um, uh, adding them. Uh, we can't add a front panel because this oven does not tilt. It stays stationary. Yep. It's based on the, the Indian Tulsi design, where the sun oven is built on an on American design, and so it, it tilts so that it stays perpendicular yeah. to, uh, to the sun. Um, but when you do tilting, you have to allow a swivel inside, and so there's a space that you either lose or gain, sure. I guess, however you want to look at it. But with the, the, the Indian design, only the back reflector moves. Mm -hmm. And typically the sun doesn't move uh, north and south, so you're not doing this a lot. You're just doing this when the sun moves east and west. Mm -hmm. There might be some micro adjustments that you may want to make during the day, but typically once this is set up between 11 and 1, the sun doesn't, doesn't uh, um, re require it. Mm -hmm. So that's something that... Um, uh, it's pretty typical of, of, of Indian box cookers. And so your food stays flat, it stays level, you can fill it up, um, um, uh, do multi-dish multi, multi uh, dish cooking in, in it. Um, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, it's been a labor of love. And, um, and the, the ugly hybrid, I'm just as proud of that as I am the, the Sun Focus. And they, they both work fine. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to having it on a, on a table with the Tulsi, the Focus, and the hybrid, or yeah. the old, ugly, yeah, the all, in, all in a row. Mm -hmm. uh, the evolution that's uh, taken place yeah. uh, with the, the, some of the same basics, but all the improvements that you've made. Uh, the ugly, which has this, it pretty much, it's the flat reflector on the ugly? It's just flat on the cardboard? Uh, the, Ugly hybrid is a flat reflector. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't arch. So just as simple. Sure. Does. And yeah. this and this is the cardboard that is in this. this is that, yep. That's what I use. Yep.
And the outside case gets pretty beat up, but I have every, everything inside is, oh, I have the glass off of this one. I must have done something with it. Um, just tighten this up. I must have did a show and then I, there it goes. And I took the glass off. But it's, a, but it's the same, it's just a flat reflector for this. And then it also has the side panels as well. And the same aluminum um, cooking chamber, same dimensions and, and so forth. Same as inside the um, Sun Focus? Inside the Sun okay. Focus, yep. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much it. Like I said, this one has the glass off. Yeah, I did a sh I did a show and I I must have um, I must have removed it so people could see inside it and touch it and uh, a lot of people that come through the booth they like to touch things so yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a petting zoo <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> well, exactly well I know that um, uh, as I mentioned at Console Foods I, I I emphasized the point that I think with the future with any new cooker and even retrofitting old cookers that people are already making, they should really, really seriously consider doing this. Mm -hmm. It's uh, for all the reasons we just talked about, um, make, it a, make it an appliance. There are some uh, proponents that are making a model that's, it will be an appliance, but it's, it looks just like your Amana fridge uh, and costs <laughs> even more. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas this, you've kept the cost down to a reasonable amount uh, that you're able to put back into when you were uh, producing them. So uh, it's a great, it's a, it really encapsulates probably the best shot at getting solar cookers out there as far as I'm concerned. Because yeah. you didn't just stop with, okay, the Tulsi, we'll just market it here. No, let's, let's listen to what people have to say, improve it, and uh, make yeah. a better cooker. Yeah, you can see how deep that is. Yeah. Um, with the, when the glass is on it, you don't notice it, but that's, you know, six and three quarters inches deep. Yeah. So I think it just fits an eight quart mm -hmm. um, Revereware, sure. Um, without the, without the lid. Yeah. Um, so you can put that. You know, if you were doing um, stew or something, you could put that big of a pot inside. Yeah. Um, but overall, it's been a great journey. Um, if anybody has any questions, they ever need to contact me. You know, go through you or, sure. or whatever, and then send it, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah. Um, I'm retired now, so it's not, uh, I'm not in, um, you know, in, there's no selling on my part. I'm just trying to inform your, your, uh, your class um, what's out there, what they can do, what, you know, and try to, for me, direct them towards uh, a hybrid yes. uh, of some sort. Yeah. I mean, solar onlys are fine, um, but it's no sun, no fun. You know, cold food. Yes, you know? yes. <laughs> and and I, I never liked that. Yeah. I, I always cooked for the dinner, and I wanted it warm, and and I was disappointed when it wasn't. Yes. So and and I'm just it's always my kind of my nature. If I can, if there's a problem, I try to think of a solution. Yes. You know, so yeah, that's the way I've approached it. Yeah. Well, and, uh, as part of this module, the, there's two or three other hybrids of a different sort where they, for instance, use a rocket stove attachment. Uh, but along those lines, uh, we'll be including uh, sections from my talk with Pat, Patrick Sherwin mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, uh, Fusion. Now, these are, both of these ovens here are, are uh, one, 120 AC, mm -hmm. and um, uh, they cannot be DC. Okay. Right. Okay. So if you're off the grid, you definitely need, even though they're low wattage, you definitely need the converter. Right. And the reason they can't be DC is the amps would go up too high for the wattage. And so it ended up being almost 39 uh, amps, yeah. which is what your home uh, uh, oven takes or your yeah. dryer, um, electric dryer would take. And so in order to keep it the, the amps down, amps lower the amps safer. Sure. It is higher the amps the more dangerous. Yeah. Um, uh, it only takes three amps. Yeah. At 110 on electric. Now the Fusion is a DC, but there that's rated at 150 max watts. So that ends up being about 15 watts. Okay. 
or 15, yeah. 15 amps, I'm sorry. The 150 watts ends up being about 15 amps, um, which is, which is um, no different than AC current, typically. So, but they can't, he wouldn't be, he wouldn't be able to make his DC. Uh, he wouldn't be able to use his battery packs. And so it's, it, it, for him to make the switch, it's too cumbersome. For me to make the switch, it's too dangerous. Sure. So they're, they're two separate uh, power sources. But again, it's not what the power source comes from. It's that it's a hybrid and gives you that 24 seven flexibility. So it's just a matter of how they were designed, their function and so forth. Um, uh, he went one route, I went another route. Um, uh, and, and all the better, I think, all the better that he has a hybrid. Um, more people that have hybrids, it's all the better for the solar cooking market. Um, I think it'll make it more mainstream. Um, yeah, there's a, there's, they are expensive, uh, but as more demand comes in, ultimately the price would, would fall. Sure. You know, as more units get made and, and that uh, economy of scale kicks in. So, um, but I'm thinking of the choice he had to make because the, the tube that he fuses the heating element onto is the cooking yes. pan. Yes. They're pretty much. I mean, you can put containers in there and so forth, but it largely people can, you know, they'll fry with it and so forth. The heating yeah. element is on the bottom. Right. And the first time you turn this on electric, the heat will radiate up the sides mm -hmm. uh, towards the thermostats. The thermostats are on the side. The floor of that oven... Um, will exceed 425 degrees. Okay. And then it'll radiate up. And when if you put the, the gun on the side, the gun might be initially uh, 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 175, and then it goes to 200, 225, and eventually that 400 degree heat will radiate the whole pan. Sure. And at some point it'll trip off the thermostat at 210, or 250 and 300. The oven will be off, that floor will cool. The second cycle, it'll never get to 450 because it's already heated sure. the sides sure. of the oven. So the only the first cycle is the hottest uh, to the heating element. After that, it, it, it drops. And eventually, you'll end up with equilibrium of the whole pan being the same temperature. So it gets very, very efficient that way. But if you wanted to uh, boil something rapidly, just put it on the bottom of the of, sure. the, of these ovens, right. and that's that. Indeed, will be the hottest spot, okay. hottest spot. Sure, I hadn't thought of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I most of the time I tell customers just put it on a trivet and get it up off the bottom, and it'll cook just like your house oven on a rack. Sure. Um, but if you needed to, you could put it right on the bottom. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, between the bottom uh, heating element. And the bottom of the uh, outside case is two and a half inches. So it goes from 400 degrees to a uh, temperature that you, you can put your hand at. Yes. And, Which is a good uh, thing. And that's where the insulation <laughs> and the heating blanket and, yeah. uh, and there's some other things I do um, I, 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 uh, with it. Um, and it makes it all work. Yes. It makes it all work. I think that's pretty much, I just want to encourage people to try Keep solar yes. cooking, be successful with it. If you fail, tomorrow's another day. And uh, don't give up. Um, you'll enjoy plenty of plenty of good meals, plenty of great meals, and maybe occasionally a, a cold meal. But um, think about high bread ovens, and um, all your meals will be, will be hot. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Except for a second time.